beauty of TN Inspire is that it is open to the entire community. And representing our ecosystem of technology partners, first up from JCA is Mi Metzner. Hi, I'm Timmy Metzner, and I'm from JCA Arts Marketing. And my topic came about because you guys have been so frustrated with the conversation about whether or not subscriptions are dead. Because they aren't. <laughs> and to put it succinctly, debating whether or not they are isn't helpful anymore. So raise your hands if you've heard this, if you've heard subscriptions are dead. Oh. <laughs> this language is hyperbolic. It creates unneeded panic. Uh, and, 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 and it's worse, it um, creates really bad season planning. <laughs> so um, what we see in this chart here, data, um, from eight different uh, arts organizations, we see the average number of subscribers. And we see that it stayed really steady. Death is not a trend here. But when we break that out into full season and other options, you know, non-traditional, we see that the full seasons are on a slight decline, while the non-traditional are slowly growing by about 2% each year and making up that difference. So there are some skeptics out there that are gonna blame it on, you know, people dying or moving away or the elusive millennial who just doesn't care. But natural attrition and general indifference have existed for decades, so something different is happening now. You know, I don't want to discredit things that people are doing that are working and have continued to work for a very long time, but people's priorities are different than they were half a century ago. How we experience art is different. We don't want controlled options anymore. So people don't want to be told what culture is or how they should consume it. And assuming that your performances are more valuable than a night at home with Netflix robs you of insights into how people behave. Your competition is a swipe right culture. <laughs> Therefore, subscriptions aren't dying, but rather patience is. Asking people to pay for something now and see it later is absurd. It's much easier to stay home and binge watch a show that keep track of months of performances. <laughs> Therefore, we have a problem with the word itself. Subscription really is turning people off. So what do you do? Well, we've got people who are creating mini packages, you know, select your own, being able to self-curate the convenient dates that work for you, and, you know, adding subscriber benefits on can increase loyalty there. We've also got some uh, flex pass options in which people buy a certain number of entrances to a show, and then they can later redeem them for tickets to the performances they want, allowing for the greatest flexibility when choosing a date. And, you know, I've also heard uh, a lot of discussion about some membership options in which people take Netflix or gym models and then they pay at either a flat uh, yearly or monthly rate, which would then grant access to severely or even free tickets to shows when people wanted to see them. But they aren't working! <laughs> and why is that? It's because your organization has a bias that they're lesser than. And that's a problem. We need to shift thinking away from this is good and this is bad. And this, uh, some organizations have also like tried to combat that with creative payment plans that allow people to pay as they go or pay on a schedule because it's really easy to renew someone into the same seat and take payment in full and it's really hard to administer a creative solution. So let's shift our thinking because our research shows that people's behavior is consistent. Full season subscribers don't become smaller season subscribers. And that fear is unfounded. It's a myth. <laughs> so now we got, this brings us to single ticket buyers. You know what, you've offered them a subscription, they don't want it, so stop. <laughs> Let them be multi-buyers. Okay, so uh, to summarize, uh, subscriptions aren't dying, but patience is because in our, uh, in, in this culture, we're all cookie monsters who can't be asked to wait for the cookies or pace them out over time. <laughs> Secondly, respond to this change. People are still loyal, but the cultural norms are shifting. 
The immediacy of decision making can't be ignored when trying to design ways to increase audience frequency and engagement. And perhaps most important of all is that ensuring, ensuring these changes need an organizational shift in highlighting other multi-buying options as just as important as a traditional subscription. Give it the same effort in marketing and communications so patrons can self-select into loyalty models that work for them. Thanks.